Welcome back, friends, and happy Tuesday, if this is a Tuesday for you. And uh, I hope you got a chance to listen to yesterday. I hope you got a chance to listen to Sunday. All week long is really about the riches of God's Word, His written Word, and what He wants to say to us. And yesterday and today for me are about uh, tuning up and turning up our spiritual hearing so that when we get into God's Word, we get more out of it. Yesterday, we looked at the last three verses of Romans chapter 11. Today, I want to look at the first two verses of Romans chapter 12. It says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Let me make some observations. This will be a little bit more tactical even than yesterday. But uh, I want you to see what Paul just did here again. He's going to give a big challenge to us, a big invitation to us. But he's still starting with God. He says, in view of God's mercy, so I'm going to give you a command. I'm going to give you a big invitation. I'm going to push you in a certain direction, but I'm doing it because God's good. And he uses the word mercy. Um, mercy is part of God's goodness. Mercy is part of God's character. So he's basically saying, because God is so good, move in this direction don't go in that direction. The world's over there. It has a way of thinking for sure. It's got ideas and plans and patterns, but you come over here. So it starts with God. It tells us that a form of worship is actually surrender. Surrender. It's an interesting concept all through scripture. The whole sense of how do we have victory? Well, we get it through surrender. How do we become victors? Well, we live as living sacrifices. Now, that's a strange phrase to us, but think about it back in Paul's day when there literally were sacrifices happening where people understood there is no such thing as a living sacrifice. If you sacrifice something, it's dead. But here's what we know, okay? Jesus became the ultimate sacrifice. His death gave us life. And now, even though it's an odd term, you know, to because there's no version of this in the world, um, Jesus is saying through Paul, you can now be living sacrifices. Um, it doesn't require your death. It doesn't require ultimately you sacrificing so much as it does mean surrender. You put yourself on the altar of God's glory. That's what we looked at yesterday. How do you live the way God designed you to live? You live for his glory. It involves surrender. You know, all other kingdoms um, become victorious through conquering other kingdoms. In the kingdom of God, uh, we succeed by surrendering. But we're surrendering to a good God. We're surrendering to the ultimate champion. We're surrendering to the king of kings. And so there's a version of this where um, it's, it's done uh, at a moment in time. You, you take a moment and rather than try to leverage God for your benefit, you live for his glory. And part of that involves surrender. And so you say, God, I surrender all that I am to you. Here's what you got to understand about that phrase. It's not a clear observation, but I want to highlight it for you. The phrase, um, become a living sacrifice. Give your bodies as a living sacrifice. It's The tense of it is on present and ongoing. So it's not one and done as much as keep doing this because all of us have a tendency to do something. We think we've gone all in with God and we barely even scratch the surface. I kind of discovered this. I used to think I'm surrendering all to God, and then I probably surrendered 25%. You know, I thought all meant all of my spiritual life. And then God brings up things like my emotions. Well, have you surrendered that? How about your attitude? Have you surrendered that? Uh, we talk about, you know, our monies, our morals. Have you surrendered that? Uh, how about your past? Did you surrender your past? Do you surrender your fears? Do you surrender your dreams? Do you surrender the... Things in your life that cause you uh, pride? Have you surrendered even your wins to where you want your wins to bring glory to God? I mean, at some point, I, I think it's like we, we, we push the onion you know, forward. This is the proverbial, the onion has layers. Um, 
we, we, we essentially say, hey, God, I'm, I'm going all in. I'm surrendering all. And then we realize, boy, there are layers to that. And uh, so all through the rest of your life, you're going to realize that this is a journey with the Lord where he just keeps making it better and richer. But we get our wins. We get our victory. We get our strength through surrender, not self-reliance. We get our victory through not trying harder, but trusting more. We get our victory when we realize that it's God's mercy that we're even able to do this in the first place. We don't do it because we're so great. We do it because he was so good. And so one more time, I just want to pray that over you because I want you to realize you've got a good God who is for you, but to get everything he wants for you and to get everything from God's word that you can get from God's word, it requires a posture. We live for his glory. And part of that involves the worship of surrender. So Jesus today, as we just take time, especially at the beginning of a year where we want to hear from you, we want to... Uh, become all that you want us to be. I pray that we would get deep down in our souls that so much of it has to do with just recognizing how good you are and getting under the umbrella of your glory, recognizing that when we live for your glory, recognizing that when we surrender to you, it is the best thing we can do. Rather than feeling like it's a posture of weakness, it is a ultimate posture of victory because we're in alignment with the God who is the victorious God, the winning God, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So my friends that I that are listening to me today, I pray over their past, their present, their future, their fears, their dreams, their hopes, their successes, their losses, their attitude, their, their, um, their belief systems. God, help us to surrender it all and come in conformity with your will. Do not be transformed or do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So renew us, Lord, even this week through your word. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.